Welcome to this campaign update. I'm Kerry Fink with TYG Media, and so fortunate to have in the studio with us today, Dr. Dave Weldon. Hello, how are you? It's great to be with you, Kerry. Yeah, and you know, you're running for the Florida House of Representatives, uh, District 32, and your opponent is Debbie Mayfield. Uh, you know, you're a medical doctor, and you're busy with your medical practice, and prior to that, you served in the Army. Uh, you were a college professor, and you also served us for 14 years as our congressman in Washington representing our area. And I know how busy you are. With as busy as you are, what would make you think that it's a good opportunity and a good moment for you to step into the Florida State House race? Great question. It's probably the most frequently asked question I get is yeah. why are you doing this, particularly people who know me and know my background. Uh, and I honestly feel, you know, we're in a battle uh, today in, in America for basically the soul of our nation and that there are forces at work who want to uh, question the founding of this country, delegitimize the founding of this country. They want to change the family structure. They want to do all kinds of radical things that, you know, were, were things that we never thought would be taken seriously. And actually, many people in the Democratic Party support these initiatives, such as uh, using our school system to indoctrinate our kids rather than to educate our kids. And and the thing that really kind of started me going down this path was just the assault on the freedom of speech, particularly that we see in our colleges and universities where conservative, Republican-leaning people are shouted down, they're prohibited from speaking. And, and I felt like I had to uh, do something. Uh, I did not want to go back to Washington because when I walked away from my medical practice in 1994 and went to the U.S. House of Representatives, um, I couldn't practice medicine anymore. And so the State House seemed like a, a, a good option for me because it's part time. They only meet for about two months uh, out of the year, and that I would be able to continue seeing patients. Uh, though I was planning on slowing my practice down a little bit. Uh, to really answer your question, yeah, I'm, I'm at a stage where I've stopped taking new patients and I'm, and I'm slowing things down a little bit. And so I wanted to give back. And, and and that's, you know, why, why I'm here. It's the same motive that made me run in 94, the same motive that made me, um, you know, join the Army when I did. I feel this is a great country, the greatest country in the history of the world, and, and, and that people have to fight for it, you know. Ronald Reagan used to say that, you know, our, our freedoms and liberties are only one generation away from being lost and... Uh, and so I felt a calling. I mean, there's more to the story, and I'd love to get into that with you, but that that's the gist of it. You know, I was thinking as you were talking about that, really um, so much of life is lived locally. And, and what I mean by that is oftentimes you can look at the overall landscape and you see that in Florida uh, we have a lot of advantages. And I guess I want to ask you, what are your highest priorities if, if when we elect you to serve in the state house? Well, uh, one, one of my priorities, of course, is going to be to look and see what we can do uh, regarding the illegal immigration issue. Uh, that's a serious problem. Uh, President Biden has just opened up our borders. We're having a flood of illegals. So any changes that we can make in Florida law to make it more difficult for illegal aliens to come into Florida, uh, those are the, the high priorities that I will be pursuing. But just during this campaign, what I hear over and over again from a lot of people is the very, very high cost of homeowners insurance. And uh, I've talked to insurance experts who tell me you cannot attribute the high cost of homeowners insurance purely to um, uh, the hurricane issue, and that some of this is really just bad policies in the state of Florida. And so. Oh, and the other thing that's interesting about that is we pay very, very high uh, rates, very high premiums for car insurance as well when you look at other states. And so one of my highest priorities is going to be to look at what we can do in the state of Florida to try to lower homeowners insurance rates to lower car insurance rates. Makes perfect sense as a uh, homeowner. I, 
we see the impact, and as a car driver, we see the impact every time. Yeah, one of the things I'd like to do is join uh, an organization called ALEC, which is called the American Legislative Exchange Council, and that's an association of conservative Republican uh, state legislators. And what I want to look at is what do other states do to keep home owners insurance rates down? What do other states do to keep car insurance rates down? In other words, who's beating Florida on the premium issue, and what can we do to change our laws to be more similar to those states where premiums are lower? That makes good sense to me. When, when you look at the uh, choice in the primary, um, there's always a number of names on the ballot, but we talked about it, uh, that Debbie Mayfield, who a lot of people may know as state senator, just like they know your name as our former congressman, but how would you explain to somebody if they came up and said, well, talk to me about the differences here in the candidates? Well, of course, um, one thing I want to make very clear is I'm not challenging her for re-election. She is term limited from her state Senate seat. She cannot uh, run again. So she is now running for the state house. And I got in the race before she did, and, and she jumped in and she decided to challenge me. So what are, what are the differences between me and her? Well, one, obviously, is uh, I term limited myself from my congressional race and decided to quit Congress, and I went back to my medical practice, which is what the Founding Fathers envisioned for the U.S. House of Representatives, that people would not stay there the rest of their lives. and. And she uh, has been in Tallahassee for 16 years, and she basically wants to go back for eight more years in Tallahassee. So I, I'm, I lived term limits. I walked away from politics. Uh, another key issue, another key difference between me and her is uh, I've been endorsed by a lot of the local leaders here in the state, of, uh, in, the, in Brevard County, in the Melbourne area. Uh, Sheriff Ivey, uh, outgoing Congressman Posey, uh, the... Uh, term limited incumbent in this District 32 seat, which is Thad Altman. He has endorsed me. And and Tyler Saroy, who's in, in District 31, uh, he has endorsed me. So I have a lot of local endorsements. Now, she, of course, is talking a lot about the Trump endorsement. And, of course, you know, that, that carries a lot of weight. And, and, you know, you can tip your hat to her for that. But she got that endorsement, I believe, when she withdrew her endorsement for Ron DeSantis for president, and she agreed to endorse Donald Trump for president. And so it's sort of, it's sort of a quid pro quo. Uh, another big difference between me and her is most of my money is local money. Uh, most of her money is Tallahassee money. Um, if I win, I'm not going to owe the special interests in Tallahassee a penny. And that's very, very important because um, – you know, if you're going to tackle something like insurance reform, why haven't they really brought insurance rates down so far? And uh, how much is the insurance lobby uh, controlling legislators up there? So uh, there are other differences, but those, those I would say, are the big ones. Yeah, you know, I want to, if it's okay for a moment, I want to stay on that endorsement thing because uh, oftentimes, you know, I asked the question, I was joking because I don't have an understanding inside uh, politics the way you do, but I was halfway joking. I said, "Does Donald Trump know Debbie Mayfield?" I don't, you know, I don't know how personal all that stuff ever is, or is it just somebody that through some connection happened? And the question is, it seems really important when you can have local people who know you, know your track record, get behind you and support you. Well, I. You know, you'd have to ask Debbie Mayfield, right. does she really know Donald Trump? You know, Donald Trump is running for president. He's got 50 states to cover. He's got all these foreign policy issues, war, Middle East, war in the Ukraine, inflation, the border. Uh, and, and why would he be endorsing in a state house race in Florida? Uh, so does he really know Debbie Mayfield? I don't know. You can ask her that question. Uh, um, my guess is it may have been a decision made by one of his lieutenants who then basically agreed to it in principle and then took it to him and said this would be a good idea because you would now have the endorsement of uh, State Senator Mayfield in the presidential primary. Now, it turns out Trump didn't need any of that. I don't think it really made a big difference for Trump. 
Uh, but it, 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 it is something she did secure, and there are a lot of people who, you know, that's all they need to know, that mm-hmm. Debbie Mayfield has been endorsed by Donald Trump, and, and they'll vote for her. Yeah, but spinning it around the other way for just a moment, I assume when you talk about local endorsements from Sheriff Wayne Ivey and um, actually the, the gentleman who uh, is having to vacate the seat now because of the term limits, Thad Altman, these people, you know them personally, they know of you, they know of your track record, and so it feels like that has a great deal of importance, especially because you're talking about uh, trying to get involved in state issues that really affect right here where we live in Brevard County. Well, some of those people who endorsed me, I've known them and worked with them for years. I was the U.S. congressman for 14 years before Bill Posey took the seat. I worked with state legislators on a whole host of road issues, environmental issues, Indian River Lagoon issues. I always had uh, an open door. Uh, I, I was, I think, very open and easy to work with. I had the ability to retain good staff working for me that worked with their staffs. And, and I, I believe I, I developed a track record of being uh, a, a very, very effective and <clears throat> hardworking legislator when I was in Washington, D.C., and that's why many of them are endorsing me. And I can carry that knowledge and experience to Tallahassee. Um, also, a lot of what goes on in Tallahassee is affected by the federal government. And I served in Washington, D.C. in the U.S. House of Representatives for 14 years. I know a lot about the federal government, good and bad, that goes on. And uh, I uh, can bring that knowledge and experience to bear in Tallahassee. So, um, yeah, I've, I, I have a lot of local endorsements. That's true. And some of these people, I've I've known their wives and their kids for years and years. <laughs> so, so um, as you served our community in uh, the U.S. Congress for uh, seven terms, um, there was a list of accomplishments, things that you were able to do for our community that were helpful. Talk about some of those. Well, one of the biggest issues I worked on was, of course, the space program and uh, the space station program in particular. Uh, That came within two votes of being defeated uh, the year before I got elected to Congress, and uh, I devoted a tremendous amount of my time to that and supporting the shuttle program. But uh, additionally, uh, one of the things I'm most proud of is I worked to uh, pass the Commercial Space Act. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the commer- what the Commercial Space Act does is makes it possible for Elon Musk to launch all of those rockets. And, and, and actually, when we passed that, Elon Musk asked to meet with me, and, and I agreed to do it, and I didn't realize fully what he was going to become. And if, if I had known, I would have asked for a photo with me shaking his hands and maybe an autograph or an endorsement or something like that. But he was just a rich guy who wanted to launch rockets. And, but I wanted to pass the Commercial Space Act because I thought it would be good for our co- community. We would have companies like Blue Origin and, and uh, SpaceX coming here. And lo and behold, they are, and the rockets are going off. Now, there were a lot of other things that I worked on, um, you know, a lot of road projects like uh, the Pineda Extension, which goes from Wickham Road out to... Uh, I-95, and now it goes beyond into uh, Vieira. Uh, That was a project that I worked on. But uh, as a veteran and the son of a combat-wounded veteran, uh, one of the things I'm most proud of is the construction of the Veterans Clinic in Vieira. Uh, That was a big project. Uh, It's a beautiful facility, uh, and and I believe that uh, is going to have long-lasting beneficial uh, effects for our veterans in Brevard County. Yeah, I remember you telling a story about how that was really complicated to negotiate in the congressional field because I guess everybody was fighting for how to get this done. And I remember in particular hearing you talk about that you were concerned about making sure we had services locally, but also that they would happen quickly. Yeah, actually, it's it's a long story. Um, the issue was uh, building a hospital. And there had been a fight between the congressman in Orlando and the congressman in Brevard, Bill McCollum, Bill Nelson were their names. And do you put the new hospital in Brevard or do you put it in Orange County? And there are twice as many veterans in Orange County as there are in Brevard County. Uh, And that's kind of what I inherited. 
and I was more concerned that this doesn't drag on because they fought over it for like 12 to 14 years wow. and nothing was done for our veterans. And I didn't want to engage in some sort of epic battle that is going to last another 12 to 14 years. So I said, let's build, you know, the clinic. And we got the clinic built in about two years. It was, it, I think it opened in, in 97 or 98. And I actually used to work there. I used to volunteer there one day a month when I was in, in, in Congress. And uh, it took 12 or 14 years before the hospital in Orlando actually was built. So I was correct that this was going to drag on and on and on. And I think I did the right thing. No, it's important. Uh, and, you know, so there's all these different things that you saw on a national level from your perspective as, as representing us in Congress in Washington, D.C., but then you also saw the importance of interfacing it locally uh, so that it's actually helping the people that live here in Brevard County. Yeah, I, if I go to Tallahassee, this will be my same M.O. I try to listen to the people back home. I try to talk to the people back home. I try to find out what, what are they really passionate about, what do they really want to see from their, their leaders in, uh, in Washington, D.C., so, so we've just been talking about uh, the work that you did in Washington on the Commercial Space Act. We talked about what you were able to do for roads and transportation in our community. We also talked a little bit about the impact that you've had for good for veterans in our community. But what are some other things that you felt were uh, important during your time in Washington, D.C.? Well, I got, got, I got elected as part of the class of 94. And we were the first Republican Congress in uh, 40 years, actually. Uh, and we took a lot of grief. We were vilified. We were called Nazis. Uh, the thing that I was most proud of was uh, we actually balanced the budget. Not only did we balance the budget, but we ran a surplus. We ran a surplus for three years. Uh, after 9-11, the surplus disappeared because we had to spend all that money after 9-11. Um, and we paid off $600 billion of debt. Uh, and, you know, we reformed welfare, we passed a tax cut, uh, you know, we improved Medicare, we included a, a, a prescription benefit in Medicare. So there were a lot of other things that we did. And I want to take that experience and that knowledge that I gained from all those years in Washington and take it to Tallahassee and see, you know, what innovative things can we do to make Florida a better place to live. You know, that is actually raises for me another question because I was thinking about with your experience in the medical field, both in terms administratively, but also as you do day to day where you see patients, it seems like it gives you a unique perspective on the challenges that each of us face trying to make sure that we're able to access medical care the right way. Oh, absolutely. You know, I've been practicing medicine for 40 years. I was on the health committee in the U.S. Congress. Um, you know, one of the questions for me is what committees do you go on in Tallahassee? And one of them that I would be interested in going on is, is the health committee. Uh, I did m make several trips up to Tallahassee, and I met with a lot of people up there. And I'll never forget uh, talking to one of the lobbyists who worked for the hospital association. And he, he said to me, oh, we would love to have you here because you know the difference between Medicare and Medicaid. <laughs> and uh, not to knock those who don't really know the difference between the two, but there are differences, and some people get elected to Tallahassee, and they're not really sure of the differences. Uh, but I would arrive in Tallahassee, you know, with that knowledge. And, you know, d delivering health care is a, is a real problem in the state of Florida. Uh, we've got thousands of people moving here, and we don't have enough doctors moving here. And so what can we do to improve our medical infrastructure as well? Yeah, it seems like it's only going to become more important. And that's a, for me, this is also personally just an interesting question. Um, it does seem like the population of Florida is expanding at a rate that, that we've never really seen before. And it does lead to the question, do you feel like we've, we're planning for our future as a more and more populated state? And what can we do from the state perspective to be, become more ready? Well, Carrie, I'm, I'm glad you you know, brought that up because um, growth, I think, is going to be one of the biggest issues that we're going to have to wrestle with. Uh, when I was in Washington, one of the more interesting hearings I attended before I left was a Census Bureau uh, hearing, and they were presenting statistics on population growth, and they were projecting Florida was going to grow by 10 million people over the next 
10, or excuse me, the next 40 to 50 years. 10, 10 million people, that's like taking Ohio and a portion of Indiana and sticking it in Florida. And so, and we're experiencing that now. By the way, I've been tracking those statistics and we are ahead of schedule uh, on that. So over the next 40 to 50 years, we may grow by more than 10 million. We may end up growing by 12 million or 13 million. So how do we handle roads? How do we handle schools, water, power, uh, one of the issues I'm interested in is green space. Uh, one of our big issues, special issue for us in Brevard County is Indi Indian River Lagoon. How do we protect that precious resource? How do we improve that precious resource? Uh, and those, those are big challenges. And, and, and it's really uh, an interesting challenge for us to face here in Brevard because we have now become uh, basically a, a destination place for a lot of people to want to move to. Uh, I, I saw some statistics recently that U-Haul tracks which place in America more people are going to, and and I think Melbourne or the Brevard County area popped up as, as number one recently. So, uh, you know, roads, gi gigantic issue. Our roads are getting really crowded, and, and how, do we, how do we cope with that? Yeah. No, it's so important. Um, let me ask a question, though. How do you know, people know you as, as a person of faith? How does faith play into um, how you see your role as um, representing us? Well, I've never shied away from um, sharing with people that I'm a, I'm a Christian uh, and I believe in the power of prayer. Um, and I, I felt led to go into politics when I did uh, in 1994. And I feel led to do it again now. Uh, there's more to the story, and, and I can share that with you if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm uh, a firm believer. You know, my faith animates me in certain areas. Like one of those is pro-life, okay? Mm -hmm. Why are you pro-life? Uh, well, you know, I'm a Christian, and I, I'm taught in the Bible that, that we are immortal creatures and that we all have a soul and that we have an eternal destiny and that God loves each and every one of us, black, white, tall, short, smart, not so smart. He loves us all, right? And, and, and that we're all precious in his eyes. And so that animates me for, for being pro-life. Uh, one of the things that I have to share that motivates me a lot to do volunteer work, it motivates me to, to get engaged in politics, is just the... Uh, you know, the teaching that was drummed into my head by my father, you know, he fought in World War II, he was wounded twice, and he always taught me that this is the greatest country in the history of the world, and, and it is a, the greatest country in, in the history of the world, and that you have to be willing to sacrifice, you have to be willing to work at it to keep this country a free country where you have the freedoms and liberties that you have. You know, that is a question uh, that probably comes up a lot when we think of uh, topics like education, who makes decisions for our children and things like that. How, how do you reconcile that there are a lot of different opinions out there about all of that? Well, in the area of education, I'm a strong supporter of school choice. And I think the education dollars should follow the child and not the, the bricks and mortar buildings that the teachers are in. And I think this is particularly important if you have a child with a disability, either a physical or a learning disability or both, that the education dollars should follow them and, and, and not the unions, so to speak. Um, I, I, I think uh, one of the most important things that Tallahassee engages in is supporting education and making sure our schools are the best schools in the nation. And, and that is something that I would like to work on in Tallahassee. So one of the questions, I guess, to kind of like tie it all together, um, you know, when people are, they're probably voting even while we're speaking right now, um, what is the appeal that you would make to somebody who may be in that undecided column? They, they, they're trying to execute their civic responsibility correctly and with some thought. How would you tell them to differentiate and make the best decision they can for um, District 32 State House of Representatives? Well, um, I know it's a tough decision. I'm a voter, <laughs> and, um, 
and I remember when Debbie Mayfield uh, ran for state senate, she ran against a guy by the name Rich Workman, and I knew them both, and I and I knew both of them pretty well. I've actually known Debbie Mayfield for 30 years, and uh, and her uh, first husband, who passed away, Stan Mayfield, I knew him quite well. He he uh, tragically died of cancer, and uh, it, and it's tough. It, it's really tough. I would say, you know, the big issues are. You know, I'm I'm a physician. I served in the U.S. Congress. Uh, I have a track record of accomplishment. Um, I, I term limited myself. I walked away from politics. Um, she wants to stay in politics. I, I would see her as more of a career politician than me. Uh, and and um, I, I'm not doing this as a career move. I'm not interested in you know, running for governor or something like that next. I'm getting pretty old and long in the tooth. I think this will be the last political job I have if I can pull it off. So so there's one other question I want to bring. This seems important to me. I don't know if you think it really is, but um, I do think experience matters. And, and um, uh, in the case of thinking about how so much of what we do at the state level is impacted by whatever is going on in the national level, it seems to me that it is a benefit when you have somebody who understands the machinations of how things work in Washington and the ability to get things maybe done in spite of that. And that would be very helpful when you're trying to look at how all that meshes together and interfaces on a state level. I'm just asking the question, is Debbie's experience all local? I mean, relative to the state. Yeah, yeah pr pretty much. I mean, she... Uh when her first husband died, you know, the Republican Party asked her to run as the widow, and she she ran for the state house, and she served, you know, more than I believe more than eight years in the state house. Uh, the original district she had included a uh, portion of Indian River County, and then she ended up moving up here into Brevard, um, and then she, you know, did eight years in the state senate. Uh, I've never served in Tallahassee, but I've served in Washington D.C., and that's you know uh, a difference between the two of us. Uh, uh, most of my support is local. Most of her support is Tallahassee. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a supporter of term limits. I'm not a career politician. I went back to my medical practice, uh, and, and I didn't stay in politics. Uh, I was able to walk away from it. And by the way, walking away from politics was one of the best things I ever did. <laughs> because when you're in politics, everybody wants to be your friend. Everybody answers your phone calls. And it's really kind of a corrupting influence, you know, because all of us have to show up every day and and earn the respect of the people that we we work with. And But when you when you win that election, you're there for two years, and, and you can – you can be so-so, but everybody tells you you're great and you're wonderful. And so I thought it was wonderful that I walked away from it, and, and I highly encourage uh, every politician to do that. Don't, don't stay in politics. Get out of it for a while. It's, it, it's a good experience. Yeah. So the date to keep in mind for the, uh, for the primary is coming up fairly quick. Yes. Um, it's Tuesday. Um, and uh, it's around the corner, and I'm hoping people will vote for me, but I'm confident they'll vote for the person they think is best, and uh, we'll see who will win. All right. Well, Dr. Dave Weldon, uh, who is running for the Florida House of Representatives, District 32, thank you for sharing today. It's been great to be with you, Carrie. Paid by Dave Weldon, Republican for State Representative.